to the classroom, Richard Curtis. You feel pumped up I am? Because I know you guys got this win in you today. Hey, good luck. Beat those teachers. Hello, our fellow educators of America. Oh, oh, energy out in the crowd today. I love it. And to you at home, I welcome you in to the classroom. Today, it's these three young ladies. They're called the students versus their teachers. And someone's going to win this thing. They're from St. Basil Academy in Montgomery County. And they are officially in my classroom where students and teachers today are both getting graded. Speaking of an A+, Monco, you guys are getting it right now. The bluest panther I have ever seen in my life. I love that thing. Ready to rock and roll today. All right, it's winner take all, cash and bragging rights. Of course the students want that, but the teachers are standing in their way. Who's winning this thing? We start with a pop quiz. Let's go. Grab your buzzers. We have one minute and 30 seconds on the clock. Each correct answer will be worth 10 points. If you buzz in first, wait until your name is called to answer. If you get the question wrong, a contestant from the other team can buzz in and will have a chance to steal. It's a fight for the ages up here. All right, my questions are ready. Your buzzers are on your hand, so you guys are clearly ready. This game in the classroom starts right now. Typically, in a standard 52-card deck of playing cards, clubs and spades are printed in what color? First one in, Mr. Massio. Uh, black. Black is right. An atom that loses an electron becomes an ion with what kind of charge? Dr. Hogue. A positive charge. A positive charge is right. Phileas Fogg is the protagonist in what 1873 Jules Verne novel? Miss Ifrey. Journey to the center of the earth. Students, free guess here if you want it. I would have guessed Harry Potter. Incorrect. Around the world in 80 days is what we were looking for. What is 135 plus 45? Quick math, Mr. Massio. 180. 180 is right. I had to add the two. What is the three-letter term for the sunken area in front of the stage where the members of the orchestra play? Dr. Hogue. The pit. The pit is right. The orchestra pit. Students, let's get you guys going here. Buzzers all work. Let's get them rocking. The Second Indochina War is commonly known as what war? Mr. Massione. The Vietnam War? The Vietnam War. The Vietnam Conflict would have been acceptable, too. What type of animal is the only one mentioned in the nursery rhyme, Humpty Dumpty? Allie. Um, tired. Incorrect. Doctor, I, Miss, Mrs. Ifrey. Uh, horses. Horses is right. They wrote them in there. What large country borders Mongolia to the north? Joan. China. Incorrect. Good guess. Mr. Massione. Russia. Russia is right. And oh no, that is a runaway train known as the teachers. 70 points in the first round on Pop Quiz. The good news is, students, you got a lot more game left to play. So today we have the students and teachers from St. Basil Academy in Jenkintown, Pennsylvania. I'm calling them the home of the Blue Panthers. What do you say we meet some of these members of our teams? Hello, my name is Joan Dotchell. I'm a junior, and I'm one of those weird people who really enjoys doing that. Hi, I'm Faith Quaintance. I'm a sophomore, and I play softball. We're going to hit it out of the park. Hi, I'm Allie. I'm in 10th grade, and the students are going to catch that win. Hi, I'm Miss Iafraid. I teach English, and I also play on a championship bocce team. Hi, I'm Dr. Hogue, and I teach chemistry and environmental science. And I just want to say hi to my husband, Seth, and my little son, Lucas. Hi, I'm Mr. Massione. I teach history. I just want to say hi to my awesome friends and family. And that is who's playing today's game, three teachers. But how about it? This is ladies' night on the classroom over here with our students. Joan, you're the team captain. You ready to do this today? I'm very ready. The teachers are going to lose. Well, listen, you, they have a 70-point lead right now, but you know what they say. <laughs> There's no lead that's not safe like a 70-point lead, and Joan and her squad are coming after it in detention right now. Put your buzzers down, you'll work together on this one. This is how detention works. I will give one team a category. As a team, you will have 10 seconds to decide if you want to play or pass. If you choose to play and answer the question correctly, you can send any member of the other team to detention. If you get it wrong, the other team can send one of you. If you 
pass, the other team has to answer the question, and the same elimination rules apply. The first team to send everyone from the other team to detention will win 40 points. Audience is ready. I hope you are as well. And we start with detention. You guys ready for your category? Yes. All right. Faith Alley, here we go. Science. Play. You're going to play it. Here you go. What is the dome-shaped muscular structure that separates the chest and the abdominal cavities in mammals and plays an important part in breathing? You guys can talk about it. Okay. Diaphragm. Here we go. Let's go. Absolutely right. The ding says it all. You guys are off to a great start. See, this is what we needed. Teamwork makes the dream work here in the classroom. Put all three heads together to get that. And here's the question for you is what teacher makes you most frustrated? Send them to detention now. Dr. Hogue. Dr. Hogue. <laughs> the audience hated that. They are like, Dr. Hogue, she's our favorite. And now we move back to our teachers, and here's your category. It's math. Pass it. History and an English teacher. We're going to pass that one. We're going to pass it. <laughs> I would have done the same. All right, here we go, guys. In exponential form, the number 1 billion is 10 to what power? Incorrect. We're looking for nine or the ninth power is what we're looking for. Nice pass, you guys. Get it done. And now one of these three students end up in detention. Do you want to send John? Miss <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I afraid really thinking this through. <laughs> no, I think uh, we're going to send Joan. All right, leaving the game is Joan is headed to detention now. All right, students. Well, you guys, you got get the category back here. Social media. We're going to play. What <laughs> video sharing platform's logo is a rounded red rectangle with a white play button inside of it? YouTube. Oh, YouTube? The Utizzle is correct. Gets you YouTube. You know what I would do? I would just stare at Miss I Afraid and just wait. <laughs> Who do you guys want to send to detention? Miss I Afraid. Oh, man, tough choice, right? Out of the game, she's gone. And we have one teacher remaining. The good news is, Mr. Uh, Massione, it's your category. All right. So you can pass or play here. How do you feel about sports? I'll play. You're going to play. The Masters, U.S. Open, the Open Championship, and the Tour Championship are tournaments for what sport? Uh, golf. Golf is right. Nice slam dunk. Hole in one right there. It keeps the game going. Is it Faith or Allie? And think about this. Whoever you leave gets that last question. That's true. I'm going to send Allie. Allie, leaving the game, leaving Faith. I'm feeling it, though, Faith. I got it. I'm feeling it. You know what she said? I got this. Here we go. Here is your category. It's television. Pass or play? Do you like TV or do you think Mr. Massione likes TV or hates TV? I'm going to pass. We're going to pass. Here we go, Mr. M. All right. This is for the win. In a 2010 episode of The Sweet Life on Deck. <laughs> <laughs> And Bailey broke up on what romantic landmark? Um, the Eiffel Tower. For the win, he gets it. Comes out of nowhere, nails it, Let's gets go. him up to 110, and he says, "Of course, I knew it all along." Faith, your pass unfortunately hurts you. You head to detention. Teachers, make some room. You're out of there. That's gonna get your score up to 110 on the pass. On a Disney Channel, that's what you never can expect anything here in the classroom. Hey, when we come back, spelling takes center stage. You're not going to want to miss that. Let's go, squad. Here we go. We're rocking our way back into the classroom. On the show today, it's the students and teachers from St. Basil Academy in Montgomery County. You guys are you guys have been a great audience so far. The students may be down, but are they out? 
Uh, no way. What do you guys say? We continue this game. We got spell check next. Let's bring it into the break, everybody. Come on now. We have two minutes on the clock. When I call your name, step up to the microphone. I'll give you a word to spell and 10 seconds to do it. If you get it correct, you stay in the game. But if you say a wrong letter at any point, you're out. If your team eliminates every player from the other team, you're going to win 30 points. If the clock runs out, each player left standing will get 10 points for their team. St. Basil, today's theme is trees. I really hope you guys are all great tree experts. So all the words have something to do with trees, as Joan just let out a giant. <sighs> all right, she's breathing her way into the start. We're going to start with the team leading the game right now. So, Miss Ifrit, you're up first. And your first word is branch. B-R-A-N-C-H. Good. Joan Acorn. A-C-O-R-N. Nicely done. Willow. W-I-L-L-O-W. -L -L Birch. B-I-R-C-H. There it is, Faith. Poplar. P-O-P-L-A-R. Good job. Orchard. O-R-C-H-A-R-D. They stay perfect to the first round. Foliage. F O L. I-A-G-E. Nicely done with the magic wand. <laughs> Juniper. J-U-N-I-P-E-R. Job, Joan. Hickory. H-I-C-K-O-R-Y. Good. Cypress. We're talking the tree, not the island country. Cypress. C-Y-P. P-R-U-S. Double E as an S. And here we go. Hawthorne. H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E. Out of there. No E. Hornbeam. H-O-R-N-B-E-A-M. Good job, Allie. Sassafras. Mm. Good luck. <laughs> Pull that wand out. <laughs> um... S A Yeah, it's only a 30 minute show, no worries. Mangrove. M A N G R O V E. Good job. Palmetto. Okay. P A L M E T T O. Good job. And that is it, thank goodness, because these words were so tough. Teachers go up to 120, and students, we are officially on the board. They actually pulled 10 points closer. Well done there. Hey, before we go to break, there are more points on the line, and I promise I'm not going to make anyone spell a tree word from here on out. That was tough. Extra credit, let's go. One extra credit question. Both teams will have one minute during the commercial break to write down their answer. Correct answer. Here's 10 points. Here's your question. What is, what is the equation used to calculate the speed of an object? Hopefully you're playing at home. How'd you do on some of those arborist questions? Look, when we come back, the game continues. I'll give you the answer to that extra credit question. All that and more when the classroom comes right back. train right now. Welcome back to the classroom. We're calling it the comeback train. Students and teachers from St. Basil Academy in Montgomery County, they're all playing a great game here. Teachers, you got up to 120 after spell check. Students, you got up to within 100, which is huge. You're going to want to stay right there. Now, before the break, I asked both teams this extra credit question. What is the equation used to calculate the speed of an object? And we are going to start with our students. Joan, you set? Speed equals delta D over T, which is change in distance over time. <laughs> yes? 
I, th I think. <laughs> Tell you what, take the points. We'll figure it out later. <laughs> Miss I Afraid, what did you say? We said that speed equals force times mass. Thank goodness somebody spoke normal. Okay, <laughs> distance over time is what we were looking for. Joan, you're way too smart for your own good. Now, here it is. What else? You, you listen, $500 if I give it to you without speaking in that uh, terminology you just said. What would you do with it? Uh, we're going to donate it to our sustainability campaign. Nice, and that's all about? Um, financial stability for our school for many years to come. Good for you guys. That will go a long way. I hope you win that. And teachers, how about you guys? What are you playing for? Uh, we will be donating to Face-to-Face uh, -face Kitchen in Germantown. You guys are playing for two great ways of, of spending this money. I hope both of you can win it. Unfortunately, you can't, so we go to music class. Don't fall flat. Someone's winning this thing. Here we go. Grab your buzzers. Buzzers in hand. Today's music class is testing your knowledge of song lyrics. I'm going to ask a question related to a popular song. Then my man, Mike Jarek from Fox 29's Good Day Philadelphia, he's going to read a small portion of the lyrics to the best of his ability. The first person to buzz in and get it correct is going to win 10 points for their team. But please be careful because if you buzz in and you get it wrong, the other side's going to have a free guess with no implications. Look, we have three sets of lyrics today. We start with this question. What performer co-wrote and sings these lyrics in a 2019 song? Mike Jarek, get in here, buddy. All right, here's your first one. Baby, how do you sleep when you lie to me? All that fear and all that pressure. I'm hoping that my love will keep you up tonight. With some enthusiasm, Mike. Nobody got it in there. It's Sam Smith. The answer is, how do you sleep? So it was right there. Nobody got it right. Scores stay the same. And we move to this next question. Hopefully somebody can grab it. What performer raps these lyrics in a 2017 song that reached number six on the Billboard Hot 100? It's a hot one, Mike. Take it away. All right, here's your second one. My mama told me, boy, make a decision. Right now, I gotta keep a tunnel vision. Audience is dying for this one, Mr. Massione. Drake? Is that Drake? Free guess here if you guys want it. It's any rapper. Joan? Macklemore. Nice guess. He's a rapper. Not the right answer, though. Kodak Black Tunnel Vision was the right answer. We move to the third one and hope somebody can grab this one. You guys got to turn the radios on in your car a little bit more often. <laughs> Here's the question. What performer sings these lyrics in a 2013 hit single? The last one, Mike. Grand finale. Good luck. Okay, here's your third one. <laughs> All I wanted was to break your walls. All you ever did was wreck me. I came in like a wrecking ball. First one in June. Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus is right. Gets you to 40 points. I knew somebody was going to grab one of those music class questions. Joan and her squad get it. Now, listen, that gets you up to 40 points, but you're only one question away as we head into final exam from taking this lead. It's anybody's game as it is a fight to the finish. Let's go. Here's your topic. Final exam is Vikings. We have three questions on deck. Each correct answer is 100 points for your team. You got 60 seconds during the commercial break. You'll write together as a squad. Hopefully you get those right. Here's your first question as we go. Eric the Red is remembered as having founded the first European settlement on what colorful island? Vikings, question two. Before Alexander Ludwig played Bjorn in the hit show Vikings, he starred as the arrogant and ruthless Cato in what 2012 movie? Finally, named for their size and shape, what slender, speedy Viking ships could easily change directions because they were the same in the front and the back? Three questions for the students, three questions for their teachers, and they're all worth 100 points. 300 points are officially on the line, and it all equals one thing, $500 to the winning team and bragging rights for the next century. Who wins the classroom today? It's anybody's guess, but we find out when we come back. Does your school want to be part of a game show pitting students against teachers? If you're a principal or an authorized school official, go to theclassroom.com for more information on how to get on the show.
classroom. Today, students versus their teachers from St. Basil Academy. They're going head-to-head. -head. Teachers 120, students 40. Here's your topic, final exam. Vikings, let's do it. Three questions. Eric the Red is remembered as having founded the first European settlement on what colorful island? Students, we start with you. Greenland. Greenland is right. Gets you up to 140. Mr. M, teachers, what'd you say? said Greenland there's double points you guys take the lead and we move to question two before Alexander Ludwig played Bjorn in the hit TV show Vikings he starred as the arrogant ruthless Edo in what 2012 movie students the Hunger Games that's correct gets you up to 240 let's see what the teacher said uh-oh Dr. Hogue Thor. Incorrect. And how about this? Students take the lead. And it comes down to final question. Named for their size and shape, what slender, speedy Viking ship could easily change directions because they were in this, they were the same in the front and the back. Teachers get this right. The game continues. Otherwise, students get ready. You're taking a check home. Hope you got room in your trunk. What'd you say, teachers? We said a Bjorn. A Bjorn. Incorrect! Students come back! Time. I know they sure did. We'll see you next time in the classroom. But until then, we take it up.